Good morning, good night, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another video where I help you heal after toxic relationships. My name is Denise Dominguez, and I help strong women coming out of toxic partnerships move past the frustration, doubt, and fear to confidently move into new and healthy relationships. And in this video, I am going to share with you <clears throat> what trauma bonding is. Like, I'm going to go, I'm go deep with you what trauma bonding is. Um, and this is something that once I learned about trauma bonding, once I learned about this and applied it to my own life, what I'm going to teach you, um, it changed my life. It changed everything in my life. So remember, if you like my videos, please smash the like button. If you want more of my videos, subscribe to my channel. I'd be honored for you to be one of my subscribers. And uh, let's get into it. Okay, so what is trauma bonding? This is something that when I was going through it, I had no clue what it was. Because again, narcissistic people are so such master manipulators that you are actually going through an abusive experience and not even knowing it. That's how brilliant they are at manipulation. So um, I'm so excited to do this, by the way. I haven't cut a video in a while. The holidays really got to me. I think I did them um, up until after um, Christmas and then, uh, or maybe even New Year's, and then I kind of just dropped the bottom. Drop the ball. Okay, so let me focus. <laughs> okay, so so trauma bonding, like I said, it's it's an it's something that you go through. Um, it's an abuse abusive experience that you go through that you may not even know what's happening at the time, and that's what happened with me. Um, I was talking to my daughter, who's twenty six years old, who not only went through a lot of trauma bonding with her dad growing up, but then also she was in a six year relationship with somebody who did this to her over and over again. So <clears throat> let me give you a little backstory to help you understand what I, the story that I'm about to give to you. So when my daughter was um, 15, 15 years old, her dad, um, he shot himself and she was in the next room. So she, so obviously that's a traumatic event. And the first thing that, that happened in that traumatic event was the sound, was the sound of the gunshot literally across the hallway, right? Cause she was in one room, there was a bathroom in between them. And then there was the other room where he was, where the gun went off and it was a 38. So it was pretty loud. So the sound is the first thing that triggers her to go back into that traumatic, to experience that, that traumatic uh, event that she went through when she was 15 years old and 14, somewhere around there. And so I, I share that with you to kind of give you a preface, preface of what's going to happen now, the story that I'm going to share with you now. So now years later, she's in this six year relationship with somebody and he knows, he knows about that event that happened when she was you know, 15 or 14 or 15. And this is, this is an example of how trauma bonding goes. So they were in an argument. She was in, this is her and her partner now. She was in the bedroom and the door was closed and he was in the living room. Okay. So just picture this for a second. And he makes a loud noise. Okay. I don't know what he did, but he made like a loud noise. He knew that would jar her to come out of the room. He knew that would like freak her out. And it did. So she comes running out of the room. She's already hysterically crying because it triggered that emotion, that, that traumatic emotion. And, um, and says, Oh my God, what was that? What was that? And what does he do? Oh mama, baby, come here. And he consoles her and he's comforting her and he's what's the matter? What's the matter? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. And so she's thinking, oh my God, he loves me so much. He's so comforting. He's so sweet. He loves me so much. He, 
he did that. He created the scene for her to cry or be triggered by the traumatic event. This is trauma bonding. Okay. You, the, the narcissist will create a situation, an event, whatever that is. Like in my situation, there was a lot of arguments that were created and then um, they escalated to a certain point. And when I would either cry or say something like, I don't want our family to break up. And then it would turn around and switch very quickly to that would never happen, babe. I love you so much. And, da, 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 and just kind of turn the energy around to where he was my knight in shining armor and he was saving me and he was consoling me and I was just mush in his arms. So that's how trauma bonding is created. It's created by the narcissist to, to create this situation to where you, the other person, um, is upset or hurt or crying or whatever, and then they come in and swoop you off your feet and console you and, and cuddle you and, and love you and, well, you know what I mean, I'll pretend to love you, um, and just like, just save the day, okay? That is what trauma bonding is. Now, again, at the time when I was going through it, and my daughter, when she was sharing that experience with, with me um, today or yesterday, she knows it now, but she didn't know it at the time. In the moment of you experiencing this, you truly do think, oh my gosh, she's so awesome or she's so awesome. And you know, what would I do? And, and this is the bond. This is the bond that you carry and that you hold because you are so thankful for somebody to come in and, and, and just save the day and be that knight in shining armor that you so desperately want in that moment. Okay. The other side of trauma bonding is that th this is also about two wounded people who, um, you know, wounds are created through, you know, traumatic events, things that happen. Um, now traumas don't necessarily have to be, um, they don't necessarily have to be this big event. Traumas can be very small things that maybe one person would view as that's not a traumatic event, but the person going through it would view it as a traumatic event. I'm gonna give you an example of that. So um, one of the, um, People that I follow, his name is Aaron Dougherty. Uh, he's so amazing. He talks about his experience in um, being having a sociopathic uh, stepmother for seven years. And he shares a, a traumatic event that was traumatic for him, but again, somebody else might not view it as traumatic. So what he says is that his parents were divorced, so he would go back and forth to mom and dad's house. And so every time he would come back to his dad's house, there would be some kind of a character or some kind of a toy, something on his bed, kind of like a welcome home gift, I'm so happy you're here, kind of symbol. And so not only was it something that he looked forward to, but it was something that um, just, just uh, verified that his dad was recognizing him. Like, I'm so glad you're home. And here's a symbol of that. Um, and so after X amount of time, his dad stopped doing that. So when you go through, so his experience was years and years and years of looking forward to this and it was validation of how loved he is, how his dad loves him and what a good kid he is and yada, 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 whatever story that he had in his head to come home and not seeing the character there, you know, the, the, the symbol there. And as a child, you immediately melt. You're very disappointed. You're sad. Um, and then never seeing that again. This can easily be viewed as very traumatic for the one who's going through it. Now, maybe you and I would look at this and say, that's really not a big deal because we hadn't experienced it. But this is just another example of what a traumatic event can be. It doesn't have to be this huge thing. So that being said, going back to the other side of trauma bonding is that trauma bonding occurs between two wounded people, two people who have been through um, traumatic events, you know, abusive events, 
whether they were um, the being abused and turned into the abuser, or they were being abused and keep attracting an abuser, right? So the narcissist was abused and then turned into the abuser. And then the other person, like usually it's an empath, um, empathic person, um, was abused and decided not only not to be the abuser, but <clears throat> unconsciously attract abusers in their relationships. Uh, and that's what occurred with me. And that's very common too. So there's these two roads that we can go down when we've been abused, right? We can either become the abuser or we can choose to, you know, unconsciously what happens is we, um, we attract abusers in relationships and not only just romantic relationships, I'm talking about all kinds of relationships. So it could be friendships. It could be, you know, work, workships, you know, maybe that's a boss. You keep attracting the same type of boss or the same type of coworkers or you're at a networking meeting and it's like you're a narcissistic magnet. You keep just finding them or they find you, whatever the case may be. So, but that I wanted to give you what is trauma bonding. I wanted to explain to you how this occurs. Okay. And please let me know if that clarified it for you. If not, I will definitely based off of your comments and questions, go into a deeper level of what is trauma bonding. But basically it is the narcissist creating a situation to trigger you so that they can come in and be the hero and be the, um, the, the knight in shining armor. In fact, I just posted the other day um, something about that. Let me read that to you. <coughs> it's my, something that came up. Um, the narcissist will always be the hero, even when that means he makes you cry or hurts you and then comes in and makes everything better. This is also a form of trauma bonding. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions about trauma bonding or you've experienced trauma bonding and you feel like you are a narcissistic, um, magnet, which I hear women say this all the time. I am doing a four day challenge at the end of this month. I would love to see you in the challenge. I'll put the link in the description below. All you have to do is fill out your name and your email address and you'll be invited to this four day challenge. And this challenge is all about how to heal the emotional wounds after being in narcissistic uh, relationships, how to love yourself again, how to trust yourself again, I'm going to do a four day challenge and each day we'll have a video in it um, for you to um, be educated on, to learn from, and to be more empowered. Okay. I absolutely adore you and thank you for showing up and investing this time in you. And until the next video.